everybody. My name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's the Ustawi segment where we discuss all things purpose, leadership, governance. It's the place where we inspire, we encourage, we motivate you, we share amazing stories of amazing leaders. And I have an amazing leader in studio. But before I introduce her, let me read this amazing bio. Pauline Masharia is a global award-winning, highly regarded leader with over 20 years experience across Europe, Middle East, Africa, and APAC. She is a renowned thought leader and international speaker for her expertise in driving digital transformation, customer experience, fintech innovation, and business operations to achieve tangible results for organizations. As an accredited customer experience professional, she has received several prestigious awards, the Financial Woman Trailblazer of the Year, okay. Excellence in Customer Experience Enhancement Awards at Finovex 2023, and Digibank Award for Excellence in Customer Experience. Pauline has a diverse international background, having worked in London, Singapore, Africa, Dubai, and Germany. She demonstrates strong leadership capabilities through her strategic vision, commitment to operational excellence, and development of relationship service models. She completed the Executive Education Advanced Management Program at Strathmore University and IEC Business School, and holds a BSc in Information and Computing Science from the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, USA. Wow, Pauline. <laughs> My goodness, and I think there's so many other things they didn't say there because I think when you worked in SA, but Karibu Sana. Asante to Jess Sana. And mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting me. I'm it's a so pleasure grateful. to be here. Amen. I'm really grateful that you came. Actually, I was thinking, I was thinking, hey, Pauline's never been on Just Angie. <laughs> you did unstuck. I can't remember yes. here because it was you. I knew you were on a panel. Um, Teresa and Juroge. And Wahiga Mwaura. Yes. Yeah, amazing panel as well. So that was really, really good. Awesome. So this is Ustawi. Welcome to Just Angie. This Thank is where you for we having me. You know, we discuss all things leadership. Mm -hmm. You've had an illustrious leadership career. Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking I would keep my mouth shut because me, I know everything. <laughs> I know all the stories. I know where all the skeletons. There's nothing I don't know. So I was like, hmm. oh, let me let you talk so that you release the stories you want to release <laughs> and the ones you don't want to release. Wow. Thank you for having me. It's You're a pleasure welcome. being here. Mm -hmm. um, my journey, actually, now that we're talking about my journey, it's it's interesting when you when I started reflecting on this, I'm like, it's been quite a journey. It has I been. feel very blessed and privileged. Not many people have had the career I've had. And uh, through all this career journey, you, you read all the countries that I've lived and worked in. Hmm. I've, been to, I've traveled to over 30 cities 30 in the world. Cities. I find that very exciting. I'm like, yeah. wow, I did all that and I was very young. Hmm. My career started uh, at a very young age when I was working for an international company based in Kenya. And my first posting was, they were shutting down operations in Kenya. And my first posting was Dubai. Mm. So I was appointed and transferred to Dubai. I'd never mm. been to Dubai. So I went for the visit, loved it. And my first responsibility was covering 33 countries. Wow. Poor in me. Europe, Middle East, <laughs> wow. and Africa. I was like, wow. Okay, here's a Kenyan girl, eh? <laughs> I'd like to say I came from the village, but I did not. You but not anyway, mm. <laughs> raised in a middle class home, mm. a very, very um, strict father, mm. but very loving. He always pushed us to be the best. Mm. We, used to call it, we used to call him the Englishman. Mm. In our house, we only spoke Kikuyu and English. Really? Because <laughs> he wanted us to have a good command of the English, of the English language. language. So that even, because at that time, Kenya, what was the business language? English. That was the main one. So he always uh, insisted on how we need to carry ourselves. Was very, I, in my life, my dad has been very, was pivotal. He was very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. So having that male figure in my life at a young age shaped my life on what the expectation should be mm -hmm. in terms of always striving to be the best mm. um, and doing things with excellence. So I yeah. love that and I like because they said that when you have a father, an active role or father or role model in your life who's male, that you learn to take risks. Because mm. maybe that's where you got it. Because yeah. moving from Kenya to Dubai, mm -hmm. it is not for the faint-hearted. No, it's not. Uh, you know, 
When we were growing up, my dad used to travel a lot. He worked okay. for an international company. Mm -hmm. So he used to travel to London a lot. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, he had that influence of the UK, which was brought into the home. I'm like, even me one day. I'll travel. I'll get on that plane. So it was a good model. I'll get on that plane and I'll go. get on that plane. I like that motivation. <laughs> so and uh, when we were growing up, uh, we had uh, our cousins and friends going to study abroad. I'm like, even me, I'll get I'll on that study. plane. I'm going to study in America. Amen. Amen. So I started studying here computer science because I did not, there was nothing else that was attractive to me. I like tech things because that's what I studied in school mm. uh, when I went to university. So I started in a small college. And I was doing programming. Then from that, I applied. I wanted to study aviation. Really? Yes. I'd even applied to Embry-Riddle University, but my parents couldn't afford it. So I went to a hick town <laughs> in Tennessee, where I mm. discovered for the first time that I'm black. I'm like, wow. Um, and that's where I went to study computer science. Okay. Did that one year. Then I transferred to the north. Why am I saying the South was very racist, yeah. whereas in the North were more accommodating, especially mm. in a foreign, you felt more comfortable. Mm. So that's why I went and studied my computer science, graduated, came back to Kenya. I didn't want to stay in America if I didn't have a job. Mm. So I came back. Um, and at that time, many people were not coming back. I wanted to come back. Mm. So I always had this thing that I was not chased away from home. Yeah. I have a place to go called yes, home. Called so I came home. back. Yeah. Started working and uh, the first company I worked for was an international company. Did four years, they transferred me to Dubai. Mm -hmm. Dubai was exciting. Wow. It was the first time, you know, when you're living abroad and you're a student, you're broke. I don't care yes. who you are, you're always yeah. broke. <laughs> Money is not enough. <laughs> But here now you're living yeah, abroad I'm and living you abroad. have money. I have money. Oh Hallelujah. You have money. You have, <laughs> you're a leader. Exactly. And here my, and I have to give credit to a lot of the mentors in my life. Okay. Because when I was transferred to Dubai, uh, one, of my, one of my mentors was based in Canada. And she's the one who was training me and coaching me in Good. terms of being how to be Excellent. a leader with such a diverse market. Yeah. What does that mean? As a leader, as an aspiring leader, it's good to have a mentor who's coaching you within the organization. It's also important for you to be willing to learn. Yeah. Don't be a kemeni that mm. you know everything. No, yeah. learn, let them coach you. And I found myself in spaces where you'd go to regional meetings. I was the only black person. Wow. In that <laughs> only African, meeting. only African, wow. only black person. Well it's intimidating. It is, but it's, it's good. You navigated your way. <laughs> You're here. But I had, because it was an international company, then you learn how to work with these international mm -hmm. people. That's where my schooling came from. That's good. On the job learning. I, I didn't have, you know, I didn't go to school to learn how to interact in the office place. Mm. I learned it on the job. Let me ask you something. Mm. How did you learn to, because now you're, you're managing 33 countries. Yes. When you were here, but I want to go back because we've got such a long way to go. When you were here, were you managing anyone? When you were here in the office here? Were you managing other people? I didn't have a team. I you had didn't have interns. A team. You I had interns. interns helping. So how do you, so they move you to the level of managing thirty three countries? countries. Yes. Tell me about decisions, because I feel like leadership they say is about decisions. Mm -hmm. So how do you make decisions at that level? Did you make any decisions that were not great? How did you bounce back from that? Were you confident about the decisions you were making, or does this also come from mentorship? I don't know. It comes from mentorship one. I cannot emphasize that enough. Mm -hmm. And then because when I was transferred to Dubai, where I was moved to that office to manage countries. So the entire office our, of our team was running countries. countries okay. So you'll find we're more or less uh, your colleagues, are, your peers are at par with you. Mm -hmm. One may be dealing with, let's say they're dealing with revenue management. Another one is dealing with marketing. Mine was uh, improvement by employee excellence and Excellent. quality management. Wow. And that time, Kaizen was big in terms of quality. So really coming up with quality programs and you have to be very structured in putting teams together because mm. you can't visit all 33 markets. No. So we had divided them into regions. So mm. then you visit a region and you meet everybody. Mm. Or you have conference calls and you and you, and you engage with everybody. So that's okay. how you learn how to navigate these different markets at the okay. same time. Okay. We're all speaking English because it's an international company. Mm. My biggest challenge is when people switch to German because mm. I didn't speak German. <laughs> I 
And then I was sent to Germany to go and study German for two weeks. Oh my God, it was a nightmare. Because you have imagine. to speak the language when you go to the shops, when you're ordering a taxi. So you always do the book. We didn't have phones, phones. to do the phones translator. Not, yeah. People cannot even relate. They think that this, that's like, they don't even know a world that existed without phones. I'm telling you. So, and that was the beginning of it all in Dubai. It was very exciting because we were a group and everybody was making sure that the region is the best. Okay. And we were the best. Okay. We were the pioneers well to make sure that this region is successful. Okay. And across the markets that you're working with, you have equally qualified people. Yeah. What does that mean? When you have, as a leader, it's important to identify the talent that you're working with. Mm. And if there's somebody who's not pulling up their weight, work with them to get him up to par with everybody with else. Everybody else. Yeah. Amazing. So those are some of the things, we would have programs, workshops, just to get make sure that, uh, and nobody wants to be left behind. Yes. <laughs> so you were in Dubai for how long? I was in Dubai for two years. Then off to Singapore. This off is a whole different other market. I went to Singapore. I've never been to Asia. Well, I've been on holiday to Thailand. adventurous. I love adventure. Yeah, Life you is even full even of adventure. Go right now, <laughs> I'll be debating whether I'm going, but... That's good. So life, so you are adventurous, so off to Singapore. Off to without Singapore. Without a thought, gone. Then, then I'm like, oh, the next, you know when you're working in an international organization and mm. you're mobile, mobility is important. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow, you have to decide at the onset what you want. Are you willing to put in the sacrifice of mobility? Yes. Living out of suitcases, but the hotels were exciting. Mm, I can imagine. Living in nice hotels. At a certain age, but, but, <laughs> poly, but good, yeah. Living in nice hotels. Living in a hotel. Living out of your suitcase. As a suitcase. Excitement. Okay. Yeah. Huh? We, we were a group of us. What I learned how to navigate in a foreign country is that we created a family. Every okay. country I went to, okay. I had a family. So that's something I learned, but I, I don't think I was consciously doing it. Okay. It's just that you end up meeting the people that you are like-minded. People who love living abroad, sharing different experiences. Mm. So that for me made a difference. So in Dubai, I left that family. In I moved Singapore? To Singapore, I have a new family okay. now with friends who are also upward mobile, People building their careers. We used to do holidays together. We had a, in Singapore, I loved it because on Sundays, we had a rule. Every Sunday would meet with this group of friends, were like six of us, would meet every Sunday and would have dinner together. That's good. So for the guys, guys, you know guys can cook. So at that time, the guys we were hanging out with, they couldn't cook. They're like, no, they would take us out for dinner. Wow, nice. So that became us, yeah. and then we do movie night. So that'd be your culture. So that, that was our culture. Why am I saying that is very important? What cultures you create mm. as you're growing mm. in your leadership journey? Very good. It can't be, it's not all work and play. Mm. Also, the culture of the organization matters. Mm -hmm. Is the organization, uh, is the culture uh, fluid enough or dynamic enough to allow that kind of environment? Mm. Now you'll find on the flip side, you have toxic cultures. Where does it emanate from? Usually it's not because it's not clearly defined from the leadership that says this is how we run things here. Okay. So that, fortunately for me, that's how my career grew. I grew in an environment where the culture was very conducive, dynamic. So even in the workplace, that's how we operated. Okay. So, you know, everybody, everybody was from a different country. So, and everybody appreciated that you have something to bring to the table okay. coming from a different country, culture. Ca coming from a different culture. Mm. And that is what now, pro in, in Singapore, I was dealing with about 30 markets again. Now I'm covering Asia, Pacific, and okay. Middle East. Okay. So I travel to Dubai, I do now, uh, that's when I discovered China. China, there's a friend of mine. <laughs> we went there on a business trip to Shanghai. I've never been to Shanghai. We got off the plane. And as you're coming out, you know here in Kenya, you walk out and you go and take a taxi. There is tuk-tuks and bikes. Oh, really? I was like, oh, and everybody is shouting, hooting. <laughs> what is this madness? Wow. Then my friend, who's French, flips and starts speaking Mandarin. I'm like, you speak this language? Because we were stuck without her. We didn't understand that language at all. And I remember one of our friends was also on sabbatical. He's like, once you guys finish with Shanghai, I want you guys to come over to Bali and let's hang out in the rice fields. Wow. So that adventure spirit is something I've always had. Excellent. And you bring that to the workplace. 
because yes. when, when yes. you're a dynamic yes. leader, you know yes. you appreciate yes. the different cultures people come mm. from and everything, mm. and you will always be different depending on the country that you're in. Excellent. So as in when I'm in Asia Pacific, I'm dealing with the Asia market. It's so different. Then when I left Singapore. Fast forward, I'm trying to hurry this I forward. Know. When I left Singapore, I moved to South Africa. There I was mm. stationed on a project for six months before I was transferred to London. Mm -hmm. So I've come back to Africa. Mm -hmm. And now I'm dealing with the South African market. Mm -hmm. South Africa, I'd only gone on holiday. I'd never worked there before. Now you're dealing with the South African mentality. Mm -hmm. There are things I saw, I was like, what? Is this what happens in Africa? I can't say them on air. Mm. But anyway, I was very, very shocked. Uh, different cultures. Um, the, the way people are so free and I came from a very conservative environment okay. so that for me was a culture shock okay and we're seeing that evolving a lot today where um, there's all there's gender equality and all that stuff. back then it was there but for me it was a culture shock because okay. <laughs> I'd never been in an environment like that then but London. throughout that whole leadership mm. journey what are some of the things I learned mm -hmm. some of the uh, one of the things which is so critical is be authentic Okay. You have to be the, your authentic self. self. You can't get lost with everything else. That's happening. Yeah. Because okay. it's very easy to do that. Okay. You have to be your authentic self and bring mm -hmm. your authentic self to the workplace. Okay. So that people can relate to you. And okay. they're like, oh, this person is somebody we can work with. The other thing is about working with others. One of the things that we need to master in any leadership is stakeholder management mm. and collaboration. You cannot execute anything by yourself. Have you need people. Others. So how do you engage with this? How, how do you engage with people? And I guess that's something I perfected mm -hmm. because I was dealing with so many different cultures, different leaders. Different so people. always trying to be able to be the person who is now, how can I make this person work with me? How do I make them cross over wow. to this project I'm working on or to this idea that I want executed? And later in life, as I grew in my career, especially in London, the whole element of emotional intelligence kicked in okay. severely. Because now I'm at a level mm -hmm. which is much higher than I was before. Yes. And in London, I was working with medical doctors. Okay. I remember one of my bosses, <laughs> he says, Pauline, you focus on the sales and marketing. The doctor will focus on doctors. Doctor work, that's what he said. I was mm -hmm. like, gosh. <laughs> like, so now I'm like, okay, there's this... And doctors work differently, but you have to work with them. So I remember there's one doctor, we used to travel, we used to do the region together. He's like, go ahead, arrange the meetings, because you're now selling this product mm -hmm. for uh, medical evacuation and security, risk management. And again, that's still service. Wow. But it's another level of service, of service. and a completely different target. What does that require? Mm. Excellence to the team. Wow. Attention to detail. detail. Attention to detail because now you're dealing with people's lives. Yes. Oh, yes. That attention it's to medical. detail. Medical. One of the most exciting things I did was my first evacuation on a private jet. In uh, We flew from South Africa to Mozambique. I had never been to Mozambique. These are things you see on the map. <laughs> and we flew, we, we flew into Mozambique to do an evacuation. Wow. I'd never been to Mozambique. We get to the airport, we are stuck because visa, I don't know what. We talked to everybody, they let us into the country, went and evacuated the patient from the hospital with the sirens, get to the airport, airborne, before the airport closes. Wow. Do you know there's some airports that close at a certain hour you can't yeah, fly in? Yeah, yeah, I know even here there's some that after certain times you yeah. can't land. So you for me that was in. really, I was like, wow, this is a different world. Mm. Even as we're doing this evacuation, that was the first time I'm hopping into countries dealing with people's lives yeah and i'm not a doctor Imagine. but i'm working with doctors what does because that you're mean this product you mm. have to be uh, a person who's dynamic able to work with others a very senior delicate project and i think also flexible is what i'm hearing yes. so at some point london let's go to london because now yeah, you want I'm to go to london have, no no because <laughs> now we're gonna have to come back again because <laughs> now we do so now you go back to london yes or you know you're in london yes but something shifts something shifts uh, around the 2018, um, there was a financial crunch. Okay. And the company that I was working for, uh, there was a retrenchment. Wow. Oh, I'm so sorry. And in that retrenchment, it was so severe, you'd find that some people in other organizations 
were committed suicide. They were jumping from bridges. That's how bad it was. Gosh. Some people jumped bridges. I mean, it was really bad. And it's, it's out there in the market. A lot of people were affected. From one day to the next financial crunch, I was affected. I was made redundant. And, um, and even though you get a package, that cannot last you for a lifetime. And I said, okay. And at that point in time, oh, by the way, by that point in time, I'm now born again and I'm serving God. Thank God. I got born again Thank in Dubai. God. Thank God. In Thank my God. living room. <laughs> in your living room. Wow. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit was so strong. It's like God just wanted me to be born again in Middle East. He knew what was coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 um, in that financial crunch, I lost my job. I decided to, and uh, now I started working for the church. So I worked mm. for the church for two years. Wow serving in a church and I'm like, okay, now I'm done. I can't do church anymore. I want to go back to corporate because I was a corporate person. I went to corporate person. It did not work out. I ended up being unemployed for about 10 months. No job. 10 months of these two years? No, no, no. After the two years in After church. the two years yes, now. Yes. Oh, now you don't want to work in church anymore. Yes. So now you're going out there. I'm going back to the But corporate. even as you bring us that story, I want to know, how did it, you know, you are a very high flying individual. Yes. How do you go from high flying individual to no job? And how do you navigate that? Thankfully, there's church, but I, I don't know. We don't even have it time. It is called humility. You know, um, there's a lot of time spent seeking God and answers because you don't have the answers. At that time. And I didn't. When you've I, lost everything. Exactly. And that is not how I plan my life. I know. Nobody yeah? plans it says for many that. are the plans of man, <laughs> but it's the counsel of God that stands. I'm like, this, how is this my plan? So it was tough navigating that. Uh, before I came to London, see, I was looking for, for a job. Before I came to London, as I'm looking for a job, I remember there's one time I was lying on the grass. I'm like, Lord, you must answer me. Like, I was so, I was like, I was at the point where I was giving up. Today we call it um, being uh, depressed, mental. I didn't know. We didn't have a name for it like mm. that, like we mm. have it in society. And I think I must have been very depressed because I reached my tail end and I said, okay. I was lying on the grass in my sister's garden in South Africa and mm. I said, Lord, take me. I'm like, I was praying. I just finished reading the mm. book of Revelation mm. and I'm praying. I say, Lord, um, please open up the heavens and take me. Mm. I'm done. That's, that's one of your favorite stories, which I love. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like, I'm done. done. Do you know how many things you've done after that, Pauline? I'm like, honestly, God. But yeah, you were done. You know, I, I was I, done. I always have this vision of you lying on your back saying, God, take me now. Take my life. I'm done with you and I'm done with this life. I was done. But you're not done. Nothing was working. I don't have a job. I'm broke. I remember being called for an interview to go to her for an interview in London in my name, in my account. I had 10 pounds. And I'm going to London for an interview. All the way from where? From South Africa. From SA? Yes. But you, God made it happen. He gave me the ticket, hotel, everything was provided for. I only had and 10 pounds. And you had 10 pounds. You had your 10 in pounds. In the middle of winter in <laughs> oh January. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I can laugh about it now. You can laugh. If nothing, I remember telling God, if nothing else, this was a good holiday. Yeah. I'm in a good hotel room. Yeah, exactly. They've covered my meals. Exactly. And I'm here. So did you do the interview and pass I did the, the interview? interview? The interview was interesting. When mm. I was interviewed for the, inter for the job, it was not a panel per se. I went and did lunch with the marketing director, regional director. They're no. even feeding you. The, I'm just and they don't know. <laughs> That's how God Funny. works. God has mercy. <laughs> Food has been thrown in. <laughs> Instead of panels. Eh? He oh has taken my. you for lunch and what for you, dinner. What do you think? When I arrived at the airport, the, that's the first time I, I arrived at the so airport with my name, arrive. Polly Masharia, Masharia, a white guy wow. with a top hat hey, hallelujah. and a limousine. I'm like, wow, is this, this is my life with my 10 pounds? I would have been very scared to arrive with 10 pounds. <laughs> because let me tell you, if anything goes wrong anywhere, what are we going to do? But anyway, let's stick to this. The story. word of God says we walk by faith and hey. not by sight. sight. You, ha you know... There's one thing to read the word. It's one thing to experience it. Walk it Leave out. It through. Walk it out. Oh, that's another journey altogether. Yeah. So when people say, I'm a Christian, please walk the word. Eh? Mm. We all have to walk. This Christianity. It's, it's a journey. And I'm grateful that all these things were happening and I knew the Lord. Because I don't know what I would yes. have done without the without Lord. Without knowing the Lord. I don't know how I would have done. Thank God. So land in London, my first six weeks, my boss tells me, we don't want you to work. We don't, we want, don't you want you to work. We don't want you to work for the first six weeks. Eh? 
find a place to live. Pauline. <laughs> Me, I was treated like royalty. The 10 pounds is still yama. Yeah. Somebody has kumi no, no, 100 pounds. <laughs> Somebody I was given an something. allowance. Really? Just, yes. Oh, give me high five. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Everything was so being taken care of. You for six weeks. You just find somewhere to yes. live. Who are these people? You see, God. That's how God works. Take me. Take me where? It's got six <laughs> weeks for you to go and be spoiled in London. He's still coming. And you're saying, take me now. You know, in leadership, <laughs> now that's what we call vulnerability. Yeah. It's that's where now empathy applies. Yeah. So even as I was le as I lead people, I'm mm. th I'm keen and I'm empathetic to their situation. situation. Yeah. And that happened, like for example, even working in Kenya, dealing with different people. Mm. Uh, COVID was very trying. This is when now you're working and now you're dealing with staff who are facing very dire situations. Times. So but you had faced them, that, yes. and you had overcome them. You see now, Pauline? Exactly. You had faced them, you had overcome them. So now you can help other people navigate them. You help them navigate in their lives, in their Amazing. careers. Again, that only applies to those who are willing to learn. Yes. I, I really true. thank God that there are individuals who've allowed me to coach them and mentor them, and mm. they're now aspiring leaders in different organizations Excellent. in this country. Amen. So that, for me, I always say at least... I transferred something to mm. someone. Mm. And yeah. was London, was it good now? Because you know, that's another thing. I don't know. I'm just feeling like mm. one, you with your 10 pounds, if it was me, I'd have said, it's, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> like 10 pounds. What if I get stuck at the airport? I mean, what will I do? So there could be people who are saying, I won't go, but mm. you went. Yeah. So did this turn out to be a great job as well? It was. It was the best job ever. That's how I got posted in, uh, in, in South Africa. So this is what happened. Back to the place where you told God to take you. Yes. Ah. God was not done with me. So he takes me to <laughs> South Africa. He takes me to London for this interview. Uh -huh. And a few weeks later, they call me and tell me I have the job. I'm like, I have the job? What? So I get the job, and then they say, we want you to be, to be stationed in South Africa, secondment. So I was seconded in South Africa on a project to launch this um, air ambulance service in South wow. Africa wow. with 10 dedicated private jets. Amazing. So my experience in aviation back the high flying. came back. Yeah, now you're dealing with people's life on pri private jets. I mean, the kind of work we used to do at the time You'd have somebody ordering um, medical evacuation from, let's say, they, are, they want to be evacuated from Nigeria to London. You took in tune of $250,000 per flight, per person. Those are the kind of clients we're dealing with. So you're dealing with high-end individuals, clients. and they, they have the money, and they want the best medical care. And that's what, that was the avenue we provided for them, that that's they could get the, mess, the best medical, medical care. care. At that time in, in time, that's when you had all these uh, crises happening in Middle East. So there were security evacuations from Saudi Arabia into Amazing. Europe. Amazing. So you're really dealing with delicate matters mm -hmm. that requires attention to detail. Which again, <laughs> I think is, under, is making me understand even your customer experience. Yes. Because now how do you come from London back to Kenya? So after I lost my job in London, homeless for 10, I was actually homeless. Homeless for 10 months collecting government check, hated it. I was like, is this what I've come to? There has to be better. God opened the door. I got recruited from London to come back to work in Kenya. Oh. And that's how I got, came back to Kenya. Okay. I told God, if you want me to go back to Kenya, you must open a door. Mm. And that door must be so clear. It was not a hookup. Mm. It was not, it was not, like it was that. a hookup with Jesus. Yeah. It was Jesus not a, hook up. Yeah, it was a Jesus hook up. Okay. Like it was that. a Jesus hook up. He said, this is what I want for my daughter. And, and during that journey, I came to understand, I am, I am the child of the Most High God. You are. And the Lord loves me, and he will take care of me. Having that total confidence in him. So fast forward, come back to Kenya, start working in a different organization. Very exciting. And this is now where I'm now dealing with 17 countries in Africa. So traveling to Nigeria and all these markets was very exciting. Mm. Um, again, you're applying your leadership skills because you're dealing with people. Stakeholder management in terms of what you need to execute. It's being a visionary because now you're running a docket. What is a vision for service for Africa? For the 17 countries For the 17 countries. And every market is different because sometimes mm. you find some nuances will work in Kenya 
but they, they will not work, work in another, in another country. country. Exactly. Okay. So it's really sitting down and understanding and having the baseline, setting mm -hmm. up the baseline and say, this is the bare minimum we expect. Mm -hmm. And this is how we are going. And you give people the freedom to execute it in their countries. Okay. You can't dictate. What they're going to do. Yeah, you have to give people the freedom to think through. All this comes through uh, also the element of trust. People will have to trust you and you have to trust them to mm -hmm. execute and get things done. Okay. Yeah, so that for me was uh, something that helped me grow. I ended up uh, working in a financial institution. Mm. Uh, and then now you can bring me to Reimagine Plus so that we bring it yes, to a close. Yes, Reimagine Plus. So um, I worked in, um, in telco and financial services. Mm -hmm. And then this year, it came a time, it's like, now it's time to transition. Mm. You see, God works in seasons. Mm. So my season had come to an end mm. and it was time for me to transition in something mm. bigger, better. Mm. What does that look like? God knows, but every time he's ordered my step. So I set up my company called Reimagine Plus. Mm -hmm. Reimagine Plus, what we do is enhancing customer centricity. Yeah, yeah. and that's something you we know, do very well. Empowering organizations to drive customer centricity for business growth. Mm -hmm. A company or a business will not grow without customers. Yeah. So how do you treat them? What kind of strategies have you put in place? It goes beyond a smile. You really must sit down and plan out the strategy. And the strategy for customer experience has to feed in to the organization strategy, yeah. which means Innovation. that there must be clearly defined vision, mission of the organization and values. If, and in those values, customer centricity must be there. What mm. is customer centricity? putting the customer at the center of everything that you yeah. do. Whether everything. it's making a payment by finance department, whether it's marketing, putting the customer at the center, and now unpacking and seeing how we're gonna make the experience for the customer with the organization. You know, sometimes you go to, you go to a supermarket, but you have a very bad experience at the parking lot. Mm. It will influence your decision. Oh, definitely. So that inside is inside the supermarket. Exactly. So the, the experience has to start outside here. End to end. Yeah. For example, in airlines, when you make when the experience of the airline starts from the minute you make a decision that I'm going to use this airline, I'm going no, here. that I'm going to travel. Travel. Okay. okay. Then you now start looking which one is the best. Is it price? Is it destination? Things like that. So that end to end until you travel to your destination. That is what we call customer journey mapping, step by step. Because every touch point, the touch point starts with, I don't know, buying the ticket online. What experience did you have online? Booking your seats. Did you get the seats you wanted? Mm. Booking your meals. Did you get the meals you wanted? Mm. Yes, you booked. But when you get on the plane, did they, did they deliver on the promise? Mm. So those are things I help organizations think through so that now um, they can for business growth. And the reason why we do that is that there's no organization that can grow without customers. Yeah, that's very, very important. But I'm just thinking, all your experiences have brought you to this point. I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All the experiences, the good experiences, the experiences that were not so great, that adventurous spirit, the customer-centric uh, focus, the excellence, the attention to detail has brought you to this place. And I'm so excited for me to know, to know mm -hmm. you as a leader. Thank you. Actually, when I started, I said, yeah, Pauline needs to come to Ustari because you're an exceptional leader. You've had ups and downs, but you're a very, very good leader. Thank you. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. So I can't wait to see what Reimagine uh, Plus will do. And we must have you back so that you can talk about Reimagine Plus. I'm definitely looking forward to talk about that. Mm. But currently, what I'm doing with this Reimagine Plus is I am bec I've become the customer experience evangelist. Yes. I'm now going talking to leaders and helping them understand why it's important for their organization. Mm. So I've been doing that, doing a bit of webinars. There was a, I, I did one of my best and biggest uh, engagement was in South Africa, Cape Town. I was invited to go and speak to leaders uh, who are, um, what do you call, um, chief technical officers, CTOs, CIOs, COOs, mm. going to talk to them about customer experience. So using customer, ex cus we call it customer obsession, it's a catalyst for innovation. As you innovate, are you thinking how it's going to customer. impact the customer? Because customer. if you don't get that right, the revenues will not come. Get that right, the business will grow. 
Excellent. Yes. Thank you so much, Pauline. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming on to Starry. God bless you guys. I hope you've learned a lot. I have. <laughs>